Let's shoot out capos. One, two, three, four, five, six capos. Now this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. They gave me these capos. Not all capos are created equal. I know that you know that. And if you don't know that, you need to know that. So I want to measure in some ways which capos are good, which capos are not as good and uh, point you in the right direction because a uh, few things are worse than having a bad capo at a gig because it will throw you off. It'll make you sound bad. You'll lose it. You'll lose money. You'll cry. So the first category that we're paying attention to is cost. The second column is storage, which means when it's not being used as a capo, where is it? Where does it go? What does it do? Because that's a critical part of a capo being good. The third one is quality. And I'm going to have parentheses perceived. This is my perception of the quality of the build and the quality of its function as a capo. Now there's also tone. So tone is going to be, uh, does it actually mess up the sound of the guitar? We will run through all of these totals and we will find the winner. We'll also pull out some interesting statistics about what's the best capo for the money. And then because there is one that is hilariously expensive, 150 bucks. There will be affiliate links for all of these capos in the description down below. If you're interested in any of them, if you buy them through the Sweetwater links, uh, I get a small commission and it's a great way to support the channel. All of the capos will be used on my Waterloo WLS. So capo number one is the Kaiser. The old faithful, everyone has this. Your mom might have had one of these. Your grandpa may have had one of these. This is an iconic and really well-known style of capo. It's a clamp, so that means you squeeze it with your hand. Hey, you're lucky, this one's not even that squeaky. So with the Kaiser, the first one, so here I am in Dadged. Let's just go up one full step. So we'll go up to the second fret. We'll see how we go. So it doesn't sound like it went out of tune. That's awesome. I can't really tell a difference in the tone, uh, which is great. Um, not that heavy, not that light, um, but the biggest thing, the another category on this is, do I have a place to put it when it's not a capo? This is the single reason why I think most people have a capo, or at least have these the longest, because they don't lose them because clamp, meat, headstock, and it's there. And it's always there and it doesn't go anywhere. And it's just, that's the best part of this design. So I think this amount of money and that feature is the most helpful. So storage, we're gonna do yes. Quality perceived, I think that this is a really great capo. The only issues that you would ever really have with this kind of capo would be when uh, sometimes as they wear out, I actually have one right here. I've had this capo since 2001. This was my first capo. I spray painted this white and blue. I've had this capo forever. It is quite squeaky. And this rubber has kind of given out, so I flipped it around to get more tension. Now, the problem with these is that they will, they'll get too much tension on the bass side. And so they'll make your E and your A strings, uh, they'll make the E and the A string particularly buzzy and they'll just pull it too tight. Sometimes they pull it out of pitch as well. They're good. They're not great. Um, I'll call it an eight. This is a good, okay, this is an eight. All right, so that's capo number one, that's the Kaiser. Let's keep moving down here. So this is another standard that you start seeing, you're starting to see a lot of. So there's the G7th. So this capo works on friction. It moves one direction, kind of a ratcheting. It won't come back out. And then you can push it to release. So let's try it on the Waterloo. All right, so you gotta squeeze it pretty tight and I immediately notice it's heavy enough on a really light guitar that it pulls, um, it's just so heavy, it pulls the neck down. It's wiggling, I have to squeeze it real tight. All right, so now the last test is where does it go when I'm not using it? Can I put it on the headstock? Will it stay? It will, but man, that's heavy. So it will stay, but it keeps pulling the guitar over. Um, all right, the G7th, that's interesting. It um, It's cool, it looks beautiful, it's heavy, uh, but overall it's 
too heavy, at least on a really light guitar like what I'm playing. Does it have storage? Kind of. Um, so, yes. Technically, yes. Uh, the other way you could do this is, and I used, with my other capos, I have a G7, but it's one that screws. Um, I just hook it in my pocket, but it still doesn't make it very easy to get out. And uh, I regularly leave these. Now, I used to have one of these, and the reason I don't have it anymore is because I clipped it to a mic stand when I was playing out, and I forgot it, and it stayed there. Uh, so that's where, for me, I'd rather have it on my person or on my guitar. But, uh, so let me work through the numbers here. Really cool. It looks cool. It has really great build quality, but it's heavy. And it's heavy enough that I felt my guitar change when I had it. I didn't notice any sustain difference, but I noticed, uh, as far as the tone, it really takes some fidgeting. And so it was buzzy the first three times that I thought it was right. So both of those numbers are going to take a hit. So for storage yes for quality in one way it feels great in another way it's just rough because of the weight of the capo i'm going to give it a seven and the tone was fine we'll call it an 8.5 <laughs> moving on to the page these are one of my favorite kinds of capos so the page capo and this is admittedly nicer than e the other two that i own um, the Page Capos for me are an old standby. They are wonderful. They play really great. They give a ton of features, and they're not that expensive. So the price on this one, holy cow, this one is only $25.50. Now, you might look at this and say, hey, that looks a lot like a very expensive capo I know about called the, uh, called the Elliot. And you're not wrong. Uh, these two, they have very similar designs, um, especially with this one being in the nickel finish. Normally, they're black. Uh, but, um, they're two very different things. Now for 25 bucks, I mean, this will still be a great capo. So let's try it out. Put on the second fret here. Through the years of playing this kind of capo, one of the things I've really come to expect is that you have to, you can't ever just clamp it on and forget it. Like you have to like tighten it and wiggle it and make sure like run through, make sure that everything's working. Once it's on, it's great. Now my favorite feature of the page is that it can roll up over the nut and it lives up here. So now it's on there, it's tight. We're in open tuning. We got the capo on here. So for storage, it is seamless. Now the downside is when you try and hang it, like I have a stand here, or if you try and hang it on a string swing, like back here behind me, I mean, the problem you're gonna run into is that when it's up here, it just doesn't fit. Like you'll go to put it in. And so this is the kind of capo that you would have to have a different kind of stand or it would just go back in its case. Um, it wouldn't, it can't have a neck hanging stand. Like there's only room on the neck for a capo or this. So anyway, overall, let me think through this. So this is $25. It's cool. I like it. I love the nickel. Um, I think that this will age and like look really cool along the way. It'll last forever. I have another one that has lasted me 20 years. Um, but it buzzed both times I used it. And this new mechanism to flip it on and off is a pain. So with all that said, I'm gonna do, yeah. The quality is low, 7.5 on the quality, and then the tone is going to be a 7. 7.5 and a 7. All right, let's move on. Next up is the Shub. This is by far the most affordable capo on this list. I think it's $15.50. $15.55 at Sweetwater. Uh, this is probably the second most common kind of capo that you will see. Oh, they changed it up a little bit. All right, so it's a little different than it used to be, but still basically it's this arm down here is different. So this thing is floppy, has nowhere to live when it's not on a guitar. So you'll see this is the only one that really doesn't have a storage place for it. 
Um, but let's try it out on the Waterloo. Now, this has a set screw on the back and basically you put it around the guitar, close this, and then you flip this back lever down. And when you do, it'll cinch, but it always takes some finagling and setting up. Oh, it's so tight. So this one pulled the guitar out of tune. Let's back this off a little bit. This one also firmly takes two hands. So the Shub Capo is not my style. I don't like these for the main reasons of there's no place for storage. Uh, they affect tone and they every time they take two hands, they're tweaky. Um, so this one is probably going to score pretty low overall. So it does not have storage. Where did I put my pen? It does not have storage. Uh, perceived quality. I mean, it's okay materials. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's fine. So we'll call it a seven, it's okay. Um, and then for tone, this one definitely lacks on tone. Um, it would take setting up unless you really worked with it every single time or played it only on the same guitar, only on the same frets. Otherwise you'd have to tweak it, it takes two hands. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna give this one a pretty big hit. So it's gonna get a six on tone. <laughs> Number seven, we have now arrived at the most expensive. I mean, considerably expensive. So let's look at this. This is the G7th Heritage. So this is a really snazzy box. Comes in tissue paper. Has a little leather case here. So in this case, wow, it just keeps going. So in here, look at that. And there's a cleaning cloth wrapped up around it. And there it is. Aiming to be very, very similar uh, to what is the most expensive capo, uh, which is the Elliot. Now this is a beautiful thing. It's very well designed. It's very smooth in the action. There is the same gate that the page was missing. The very simple gate, same kind of idea. This lives on your guitar all the time and is just a very uh, smooth operator. So let's try it on the Waterloo. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, look at that. It's so shiny and beautiful. Um, it's not as heavy as the other G7th. Um, it's very smooth to operate. You would get used to it. Um, I'm not used to it, so that's why there were two uh, just really clear, um, like the first two times I tried to use it, it was still buzzy. And it did pull the guitar out of tune a smidge. This little gate is a little loose. Like I would expect it to click into place and hold it because uh, it could just flop open. It's weird, it like flopped closed and the gate closed. So now it's stuck, but uh, that's interesting. It's not up to the quality I would have expected. I think that the page feels a little more sturdy and it's what, $25? So does it have storage? Yes, but kind of halfway because it still has the same problem of the guitar hanging. Yeah, and you would definitely get used to having to really crank it down. That was the thing I really felt like I had to crank it down to get it to not buzz. And by the time it's not buzzing, it's pulling pretty hard. Now you can get these, there's two versions of these. Uh, this one has a 12 inch radius. I'll have to look. So this does have a radius. You can match the radius to a guitar. That's another way, if you're really looking at bespoke and boutique capos, uh, you can match your nut width and match the radius. And that's really helpful. But overall, um, the tone of this, I didn't notice any substantial tone. So I will give it a pretty high score on the tone. 
Um, but it does have storage. And then the perceived quality for me is an 8.5. Like, it's good. It's not great. I would might be a little sad if I spent 150 bucks on this. Uh, because for this, I would, I'd buy an Elliot. And an Elliot is like hand-polished, handmade, stainless steel. So without being able to see the mechanics of this, it just doesn't feel like it meets the same price point and expect expectations of, you know, the Elliot Capo or another kind of handcrafted bespoke option for around the same price. Um, now, okay, so let's run through. So it does have a place for storage. And as far as quality uh, of the build, I'll give it an 8.5. And then for the tone, I'm going to give it a seven because it does struggle. Um, you would probably get used to it, but it's not a quick thing. It's not a boom, I'm in the right key. It's hang on, let me listen to it. And sometimes you're just not in a place where you can just sit there. And um, yeah, you're not in a place where you can make sure that everything's good. You need to just jump and go. And unfortunately, this capo just can't quite do that. <laughs> And now for the last capo. This is a weird one, so buckle in. So this is the spider capo. I've never actually played one of these. I've been curious to try these out for a couple of years because basically there are six independent capos that can poke down whichever ones you want. So in theory, you could do open tunings. You could do some of the tricks like you've seen probably Kaiser tricks. Um, okay, so the quality right away feels really, really plasticky. Now the price on this one, $29.95. So twice the price of the cheapest options. Um, but let's try this thing out. It's interesting that you have to space these out yourself. Put it up there in an A. Hmm. Let's just put all of them down. Just trying to use it just as a regular capo. gimmick is real high on this. So the things I don't like about this is the spacing on these. Um, they can get all jumbled up, they can get all mixed up. They don't actually come back and sit evenly spaced. Um, man, this is maybe a recording tool. I don't know. This one. Yeah, I, <laughs> whoops. I thought I would like this more than I do. Um, is there a storage place? No, there is not. Um, uh, my perceived quality, it is incredibly cheap and plastic feeling. Um, I've seen other people use these. I don't know if I've seen anybody use one well, um, but the quality just isn't there. It feels like maybe like injection molded plastic parts, maybe 3D printed, not even that. Um, it's just, it, it lacks so much. Um, cause these are not this, they're all the same height but the strings are smaller diameter. So one of the things is like, this is not gonna be able to get the high strings, your E and your B very well. Um, so the quality is very low. I'm gonna give this a four for my, no, that's too high. 3.5 for my for the quality on this. It's just, it just is not good. Um, the tone is terrible. I'll give it a three. So 3.5 and a three. Uh, man, I didn't see that coming. I thought I would like this one a whole lot more. Of all six capos, six capos, uh, there were two that were basically disqualified because there's no storage. That's the worst thing for a capo. It either has to easily go on the headstock or hook into your pocket. But the shub and the spider, basically, there's just, they're useless. You're going to lose them. There's no place to put them. 
Um, and there's no place to get them quickly. So if you do put them in your pocket, on the mic stand, whatever, you're either going to lose them or they're going to be too hard to get out. And you're probably not going to use them that much. So those two are basically out right away. But the Shub had a really uh, great run because it's the price to quality is pretty high uh, in the ratio. But the clear winner is the Mighty Kaiser. Um, this is a total winner. So when I look at the Kaiser... It scored really high for the tone. It had really high quality. Um, and then it also came in as only the second... Uh, it's only the second in price. It's uh, $15.50 for the Shub, but the Shub just isn't a good option. And the Kaiser is the total winner. It's amazing. You should absolutely... If you don't own one of these, if you don't own four of these, you should check one out. There are links in the description below if you need to get a capo. The Kaiser is an amazing winner. Now, in second place, that is really awesome, is the Nickel Page. This is only $25.50, right? The $25.50 for this capo. It's easy to store. It stays on your guitar. It sounds really good. It's just a cool thing. Now, the only thing I wish that was different on this was the more original, the gate, uh, where it would flip up over the end because then it was a little faster to move. But you could run this pretty well one-handed. What I usually do is put two fingers on the top. I run it to where I want it to go, and then I tighten it down, and it's boom. It's ready to go. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy. I am the Guitar Hunter. Uh, I hope that this answers almost every question that you have about capos. Uh, you should check out these capos. You should treat yourself. They are a fun and easy way to just add vitality to your guitar playing life. This video could not have happened without Sweetwater and their sponsorship, so please check out Sweetwater. They are a great friend of the Guitar Hunter channel, and uh, I'm very thankful. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. So the categories are as follows. Number one is cost, so we'll go through the cost of each one. We're also then... I can do this. I believe in myself. So the first category that we're paying attention to is 